Okay, we're going to run through chapter one real quick. Um, most of the questions on the first test will be from uh, chapters three, four, five, and six, but there will be a few from one and two, so we'll run through those real quick on most important things you kind of need to remember, basic things you need to know. Uh, we talked about the victor, the wild boy of Aviron, uh, who was not able to be taught to be much of a human being. Um, kind of died in his wild state, pretty much. Um, skip through this stuff. <coughs> Do you know the definition of human development, the scientific study of how humans develop? Main questions, how do we change throughout our lives? How do we stay the same? Uh, this is interesting stuff, but I'm probably not going to ask about it on the test. But it does uh, bring up nature versus nurture. Do know some about that. This is camera preview. Uh, we started studying human beings when they started, more of them started living longer and uh, trying to figure out what was going on. We do include the entire lifespan. Uh, it is a very interdisciplinary approach. It takes in lots of different fields of study. Do know the four main goals of uh, psychology to describe a behavior or a um, something that's happening, a phenomena, explain why it happens or how it happens, predict what might occur uh, at, under different circumstances, and try to modify by being able to explain how all these things happen and what we can do to help change them. There are two types of developmental change, qualitative which is a change in kind or structure, and quantita okay, quantitative, which has to do with things we can count, numbers or amounts. We look at physical development, cognitive or thought development. We look at psychosocial development, the person and that person's place in society, in relationships. The periods are a uh, social construct, which means that they don't really, uh, that we just decided that's kind of how they are. Different people have different social constructs as far as cultures and societies. Do know the periods of the lifespan and kind of how the length of each one relates to its importance. To have a decent idea about what we talk about when we're talking about heredity and environment, nature and nurture. Maturation impacts how we do things also. Families are changing. It used to be uh, we considered things a nuclear family was the norm. Two generations, that's the, the cleavers or whoever. That was mostly a Western thing, uh, and it's not, a go it's not as common. Uh, in fact, I think it's less than 50% of the American households now because things are changing. This is making a lot of people fairly pissed off, but, you know, what can I say? Uh, they try to want things go back the way they were, and things really never were that way. Extended families. Uh, everybody in the family is included, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, grandparents, great-grandparents, uh, primarily a non-Western type of thing. It's becoming less typical also. We're moving around a lot. In fact, the whole world is becoming much more mobile. Okay, contexts, things that are going on when we're dealing with um, development. Socioeconomic status is at the top. Um, it's how much money is available for people. Uh, poor kids, poor people just have it harder and poor kids are going to have more uh, negative outcomes, more likely negative outcomes. Uh, it's not a for sure thing. Lots of poor kids are making it all the time. It's just a lot harder. Here's some of the nasty things we talk about as far as uh, poverty, hurting children. Uh, quite a few kids in our society are in poverty. 
basically know a little bit about, well, just know that poverty hurts and that um, a kind of a, a reasonable amount about why it hurts, how it hurts. Culture impacts how we do things, how we view things. It's just stuff that is passed on to our children. It's part of the environment more than the um, heredity part. Race and ethnicity impacts situation. Ethnic group is a group with a shared identity and it can be based on many different things. Race is a social construct. Um, we just kind of we redefine what makes somebody one particular race or another as we go along. Ethnic gloss is kind of um, stereotyping a culture or ethnicity. Uh, it's kind of like calling all people black, Hispanic, or white. Um, a lot of people don't view themselves as black. A lot of people who are uh, of Hispanic origin do not consider themselves to be Hispanic. They're Mexican or Cuban or whatever. And as far as white goes, I'm not. I'm really not Anglo-Saxon. Uh, I have my own ethnic background that I consider. Historical context is really important. These are the unique times in which people live and grow up. <clears throat> Things like the Great Depression, World War II, the 60s. Uh, here, um, I was talking about 9-11. That changed our world, that changed our nation, changed our society, so uh, y'all might be considered the uh, class of 9-11. Normative influences are things that happen to us that are normal, uh, tend to be similar for an age group. Puberty, menopause, uh, when most of us, uh, that's maturational, social, um, is le more flexible, but even there we tend to um, start school at the same time, we tend to start driving a car at the same time, uh, dating somewhere within the few years of each other so social things tend to be happen generally at the same uh, time on lots of lef different levels some of the normative history graded stuff there's well um, know what your cohort is it's the group born around the same time so your cohort would be people around your same age uh, we would figure they have gone through a lot of the same general things with you Non-normative influences are unusual events affecting individuals' lives. Things that generally happen to everybody but happen at different times, like puberty at age 20, or for uh, girls, puberty at age 8. Um, early puberty for females tends to be a pretty negative uh, thing, has lots of negative impacts. Uh, marriage in the teens, or it can be atypical events. Um, birth defects, that's something that impacts not only the person with the defect, but their families throughout their lives. Um, winning the lottery, so these atypical events can be seen as either positive or negative. Timing of influences seems to be real important. Imprinting is what happens with some of the lower animals. Um, there's an interesting video on YouTube about imprinting. It has a, do, a, a duckling that has imprinted with a puppy, and that was kind of an interesting thing. I'm not going to put it on here, though. It would take up uh, several minutes. And uh, Google uh, imprinting uh, ducks on uh, YouTube. This does indicate predisposition or readiness to learn. Now, there are critical and sensitive periods as far as timing of influence. A critical period is a specific time when an event or its absence has specific impact on development. Uh, this is one of the things we've looked at as far as um, language development. Um, Victor kind of made us, uh, some scientists think that maybe there was a critical period when a um, that had when language had to be learned or it wasn't learned at all. Um, other research, we found lots of kids who have been locked up uh, since early age uh, in, in barns and 
sellers and sales and never talk to. What we've found is that if we can catch them before about age 10, we have a decent chance of teaching them some language. Uh, if we don't catch them before puberty, it seems like there is, uh, they are totally unable to, to learn language. So childhood is a critical period for many things, including learning a language. Sensitive periods are developmental timing when children is particularly responsive to certain experiences. Uh, with the language thing, let's go ahead and stay with that. Um, you can learn a foreign language or a second language when you get older, but if you don't learn it pretty young, then you're always going to have an accent. So uh, whereas you can learn, a, most of us can learn a second language throughout our lives, it's a sensitive period before, uh, oh, even before 10 again, uh, when you can learn the, a language best. So. Um, just kind of know a little bit of the difference between those two. Modifiability of performance. Plasticity lasts throughout the lifespan, but it has its limits. Um, plasticity is just the ability to change. Uh, people say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Yes, you can, but it takes more time and effort. We tend to be more plastic when we are younger and then grow less plastic as we get older, but we still have the ability to ch make changes within limits. Uh, never try to teach a pig to sing because you waste your time and irritate the pig. Okay, Baltes came up with uh, a six principle lifespan approach. He said that development is lifelong change and adaptation occur throughout our lives. He said that in development involves both gain and loss. As we, there's that uh, ability to acquire language goes down uh, as we gain vocabulary. Also when we are young, that most of the development is gain, but the parts of the brain that we don't use, let's not say the parts of the brain go away, but uh, like the language thing, if you don't get the language uh, part of the brain stimulated with language, it goes away. The brain is used for other things besides language. So whereas a child's brain is really growing, it's also pruning off parts that aren't being used and replacing those parts with other parts. Um, so mostly gain some loss. As we get older, it changes and we start to have mostly loss uh, in most areas, muscle, ability, uh, heart, lung capacity, uh, skin, hair, lots of things that we're losing as we get older, but we gain, we hope, in knowledge and experience and wisdom. <coughs> Excuse me. Developmental, development influences changing allocations of resources. Uh, and development shows plasticity. So do kind of have a decent idea of what he's talking about there. Oh, there we go. Development is, fluent, is influenced by historical and cultural context. Okay, that's the end of chapter one.